We know that pets bring love, healing, and companionship to not only their families, but to those they're around, even for short periods of time. And this morning, we want to welcome Larry Grogan, author of A Tale of Love, Life Lessons from Scrappy, a pet therapy dog. He is here this morning along with Sharon Kistner and special guest, Charlie, <laughs> who's a pet therapy dog that we all want to take home. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you. It's Thank a pleasure. You. Well, let's start with you a little okay. bit about the book. And I was reading just kind of all about you and, and what financial advisor by trade and just fell into this love of pets and pet therapy and really saw the benefits of pet therapy. Yeah, you know, pet therapy is just an incredible experience for anybody that wants to get involved. And quite honestly, we need more people to get involved. We simply do not have enough pet therapy dogs to go around. And um, we just need to get more people interested and, and learn more about what it is. And you, of course, had an incredibly special relationship with Scrappy. I did. And Scrappy's no longer with us. But in Correct. this book, you talk about just the relationships that, that Scrappy made and how he made a difference in so many lives. It's true. You know, for eight years, we were a pet therapy team at Nice Wonder Children's Hospital. And, you know, you experienced things that you would never think you would have to experience. But it's just the relationships that you build, not only with the patients, but with the nurses, the doctors, and all the administration that uh, comes along with running a hospital. And so um, we just had a wonderful opportunity. And um, Charlie's going through the same thing, which Charlie, is a great yes. thing. Charlie is having some experiences now. And does it get any cuter than little Charlie? <laughs> Please tell me we, oh, look how cute. <laughs> and Sharon, what's it been like for you going through this experience and seeing Charlie interact? Well, it's a very rewarding experience. Uh, you get to meet a lot of people and um, they just appreciate getting to see the dog and uh, Charlie enjoys it. Everybody enjoys it. And it really makes a difference on the aspects of mental health. And we've seen with the last couple of years with COVID and isolation, and you guys have been able to see just some incredible differences when it comes to, to mental health. It really is true. You know, when COVID came into our lives, it affected everybody in a lot of different ways. And mental health has really been a pandemic of its own for our students. You know, when you take into consideration there's nearly seven mil, excuse me, 70 million students from K to university. Um, we just need the dogs to help relieve some of that mental stress. And in fact, there's 60% of the colleges and universities now have pet therapy programs. I mean, all over the country. And the idea is to give everyone the opportunity just to decompress and think about something else, enjoy some companionship with someone else that's gonna <laughs> love you back, oh. like Charlie. But again, we only have 50,000 certified pet therapy dogs in the entire country, which is why we need to get more people involved, get more people certified so that more love can be spread. All right, and what a wonderful way to just take those first steps and get started, check out the process, and that's really kind of the word you're spreading today. Exactly. All right, well, we're going to give everybody the information. Charlie, thank you so much for coming on the show. You're always our superstar. The book is called A Tale of Love. And for more information on pet therapy or to learn more about the book, you can go to the website that is right there on your screen. Sharon and Larry, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. <laughs>
What made you want to write this book? Well, I can't say that I wanted to write it. I'll tell you okay. what happened. Um, you know, Scrappy passed away June 30th, 2019. And we had been a pet therapy team for eight years. We'd been together for 12 and a half. And I was an emotional mess, to be perfectly honest with you. Her yeah. loss was that significant to me. And so I would take a piece of paper and rip the corner, write a little note and put it with her ashes. And this would go on for days, months at a time. And then the notes became letters. And then the letters became stories. And so the writing became my therapy to deal with her loss in my life. And so on the first anniversary of her passing, uh, my girlfriend and I went away. And it was an opportunity for me just to organize my notes, write a little bit more. I wanted it to resemble a book, but it was never my intentions to publish a book. But I just kept writing and writing and writing because emotionally it was doing me well. And so on the second anniversary, we went back to upstate New York where we um, brought our lives together. And I just kept writing and organizing. So by the end of that week, I had something that resembled a book. I shared it with a friend of mine and she encouraged me to get it published. And so that's what I did. I had no idea what I was doing, but I found some resources, got it published. Uh, we launched it October of uh, 21. So let's go back to the beginning. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about Scrappy, how she came, how she came into your life? Yeah, Scrappy was uh, five pounds of fur. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's really all there was to her. She was so small, Rob, I could place her on my forearm and all four paws would fit in the palm of my hand. Right. And uh, that's how she loved to get around. She loved to be up high so she could see everybody. Mm. But um, people would always ask me if she was a rescue dog. And my response was, well, not in the traditional sense. And what I mean by that was when we were in New York, I was seeing a young lady and she actually got scrappy, but she also had a four-year-old son who really just terrorized scrappy. So anytime he came into the room, she came to me and looked for protection. And mm -hmm. so when we stopped seeing each other, we both agreed it was in everybody's best interest if Scrappy came with me. So she was my part of the settlement, if you will. And uh, we lived happily ever after. <laughs> so, you know, you know, we go into pet therapy. A lot of people don't know what that is. We've interviewed many people, like I stated at the beginning of the interview, you know, speaking about service dogs, speaking about dogs that do go into hospitals, children's hospitals, uh, vet hospitals, and really help uh, these children, these vets, people that really need help. Uh, maybe they're on death's door. Maybe they're just suffering from a serious illness and they're just trying to get back on their feet. Can you talk about how Scrappy helped people in general through her therapy? Yeah, absolutely. So you're bringing up an excellent point because there is a difference between service dogs and pet therapy dogs. Service dogs are trained to perform a very specific function and they are typically assigned to someone that has a unique need. It could be someone in a wheelchair that needs, um, you know, help just getting around the house. Uh, guide dogs for the blind. Those are service dogs, you know, in your family situation you know, that service dog is providing a very unique skill to that person. Pet therapy, on the other hand, is really to go in and comfort, to be a, an emotional release to a patient. And for Scrappy, we would go to a local children's hospital. And it was really just the most amazing experience because I don't know if you've ever seen a commercial. There's a dog food commercial. And it shows a little girl lying in bed and the nurse comes to the door and the little girl sticks her arm out and she says, more treatment. And the nurse says, no, we're gonna try something a little different this time. And then a, a pet therapy dog walks in. It's actually a, a young German or a St. Bernard. And the expression on that girl's face was perfect to everything that Scrappy and I ever experienced because 
when you walk in and you see a dog with a child in a hospital bed, number one, the child doesn't expect to see a dog. I mean, how often do you think a dog is actually in a hospital? It seems kind of weird and a little, a little strange. But the reaction was the same just about every single time because that child would then just smile. The, the emotions on that child's face just really began to blossom. You could see the smile. You could see the excitement. And they got energy in their body. And you could see them actually just kind of sit up and let bed a little bit. And all we ever did, Rob, was just go in and I would hold Scrappy in my arm and they would just pet on her. Yeah. Occasionally I'd put her in the bed with the, the child and she would just lay there with them. And it was just an opportunity for that child to find a, a release. And because when you're with a, a pet therapy dog, your body actually goes through a medical transformation. Your body produces a hormone called oxytocin. And oxytocin re, uh, releases stress, releases tension. It lowers your heart rate. It does well for your heart. But it's really the beginning of that healing process. We all know that the best way to heal is to eliminate stress and allow that body to recover from whatever is painting it. And so the pet therapy is really all about that. A tale of love. Definitely check out the book. Again, Larry Grogan here on Fire Breathing Rob. Larry, as we keep going into the interview, let's talk about the training for pet therapy. How did that, how does that, you know, happen? Do you have to go through classes? Can you do it on through the online? How does it all work? Yeah, the, the training is um, a structured program for Scrappy and I. It took six weeks. And there's really four different phases that you really have to satisfy. The first one is with regards to the dog, what's the temperament of the dog? If you have a dog that loves to be around people, um, it's just a pleasure to be with. If you love your dog, other people may love it too. Please consider pet therapy as something that you would want to consider with your pet because the training is not that difficult to be perfectly honest with you, but it's something that you've got to do. You need basic training skills. Sit, stay, down, no jumping. You cannot have a jumper. And then there's some other things that you've got to go through. There were two skills that Scrappy and I really worked hard on. And one of them was uh, what's called separation. You know, Scrappy was so attached to me, she never really wanted to be away. But one of the tests that we had to satisfy was I had to leave Scrappy with a stranger and then leave the room, be completely out of sight for three or four minutes. And the objective was not to have Scrappy jump or try to find me or get away from the person that was holding her. And so that was something we actually worked really hard on. And so what we did, we went to Lowe's or Home Depot. I had a friend go with me. She held Scrappy. I walked down the aisle so that she could see me leave that area and then walk behind and just had my phone out for three minutes and then would come up the other way and just make sure that she wasn't, you know, trying to find me. The other one was they would put a hot dog on the floor mm. and you had to take your dog within three feet of that dog. And they didn't want the dog to lunge for it. They could, you know, just kind of walk by it. And so as you're going by, you're saying, leave it, leave it, leave it so that they're not trying to gain access to the hot dog. And the purpose of that is to, represent the possibility of some type of medication being on the floor if you're in a hospital, some mm. kind of liquid on the floor. They don't want the dog to either eat it or lick it or anything of that sort because you just have no idea what it is and you have no idea what the reaction is going to be. So the training for the dog is really those two fundamental things. But the third component, and this is important, is the handler themselves, the human. You've got to be able to tell the dog exactly what needs to be done. And the two of you have to work as a team. And so those are really the main criteria with regards to um, pet therapy. If you go to our website, there are four organizations that uh, provide training and uh, you can get all the resource, resources you need, excuse me, from there. Going into this book, 
what do you hope the reader gets out of it? Because there's a lot of people dealing with dog loss, obviously. And obviously, uh, Scrappy was very special because she touched a lot of people's hearts through her time as a therapy dog. Uh, so can you go, go into that a little bit about how the book you feel like should touch people that read it? Yeah, excellent. Um, I think there's a couple of things that I really want people to understand. One, obviously, is the pet therapy. You know, I share some very unique stories. And as a pet therapy team, I think that's one thing that people need to understand. You're going to be in situations that you would never, ever expect to experience uh, more than likely. You know, whether it's a child going through chemotherapy or some type of abuse um, that you don't know the details, but that's why Scrappy was there to help those children. You know, others were just, you know, sick or they might have had surgery of some type. Their family wasn't there. Um, so Scrappy provided that comfort and, and allowed them. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound good. Got an alert here. <laughs> National Weather Service. <laughs> I apologize. It was all right. Stay, stay safe. <laughs> yeah, it's even muted. Oh. But um, so the book describes some of those situations. But I think on a much larger level, Rob, as I began to reflect um, after Scrappy passed away and thought about all the things that we did together, I began to realize she was teaching me life lessons. And that's really the value of the book, I believe. There were certain things that I think I saw in her that I now try to incorporate into my life uh, to make me a better person, not only within myself, but those people that uh, I'm around and I want to touch. So that's the big level of the book itself is really the le life lessons that this five pound ball of fur was able to um, share with me. But dogs in general, why do you feel like they change people's lives? Well, I think, you know, I, I described the medical condition. I think that's one idea. When that hormone called oxytocin gets released, it just does something to us. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing, the reason that dogs change our lives is um, we have to be responsible for them. They yeah. are 100% dependent on us to give them food, water, shelter, love. And they, in turn, give that back. They don't know anything different. Yeah. And so when we talk about unconditional love with dogs, I think that's where it comes from. They want us to love them. And in return, they want to love us. And so yeah. I think that's where the the compassion really comes into play with regards to uh, dogs and that human bond relationship. And it's just a, an overpowering bond, in my opinion. Um, a lot of people talk about the need to exercise with your dog. You know, your dog needs to go out and walk and play, which causes us to go out and do the same thing. So there are health benefits for us to get out and walk, run, throw a ball, uh, do something other than sitting on our rear ends and it can generate better health conditions for ourselves. You know, if we're out exercising, maybe we're going to lose a few pounds. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I so hear you. I, I, I think that's the beauty of uh, that dog and human relationship. But what advice would you give to people? Because I still, you know, think about it uh, that, you know, know that eventually this dog is going to pass away and you'll never be ready for it. Yeah, you're, you're very, that's very true, Rob. And, and I'll tell you, your situation and our, mine is very, very similar. Yeah. Um, you know, today is uh, June 28th. And Scrappy passed away June 30th. Yeah. So you can still see my emotion because right. she was a family member. She wasn't a pet. Right. They don't understand. Yeah. 
and she people was, that don't have dogs. Sorry to interrupt, Larry. People that don't have dogs don't understand where Larry and I are coming from. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you're right. And those that do, do understand. And so mm -hmm. I think having said that, one of the things that I could share was a couple of things. One, don't be afraid to cry. Um, yeah. I, I'll share, um, you know, just one thing that I, I told you earlier, I graduated from North Carolina State and I was fortunate enough to be a student when the Wolfpack won the NCAA basketball oh, wow. championship in 1983 and Jim Balvano right. was uh, the coach. And when he made his SB award speech mm -hmm. um, several years later when he had been diagnosed with cancer, he, he made a very profound statement. And he said, there's three things that you need to do every day. One is laugh. Mm -hmm. if you've got to laugh every day. The second is think. You've got to take time to think. And the third is to bring your emotions to tears. And I write about that in the book. And I, one of the things that I want to make clear is that there's no shame in crying. Right. We see it all the time. We don't always recognize it that way. We see professional athletes hmm. when they lose a game, make a bad shot, whatever case it may be. There is emotion, there's passion there. And it's that passion for whatever that situation is that causes you to bring your emotions to tears. It simply means you care. So never be ashamed of the fact that your emotions are so great that you're gonna shed tears. I still shed tears, you just saw it. It's yeah. been nearly three years. Um, so that's what I would advise people on. I, I think the other thing that I think is important is I have not re found another dog. I'm, I haven't looked for another dog. I'm mm. still trying to manage and cope with life without Scrappy. And I'm unique in that position because I'm not married. I don't have children. Yeah. And I, I've seen families with children automatically get a new dog. And what I would encourage them to do is to wait a little bit and talk about what that dog meant to that child. And if the child is old enough, do what I did, write something. Writing was really just a very therapeutic uh, process for me. Because as Jim Valbona said, you have to think. You have to think about what it is you're going to write. And that allowed me to open up these emotions and remember all the great things that we did together. Do you think you'll ever get another dog? Eventually, eventually. Mm -hmm. I think um, it, it's still going to take some time, not so much on the emotional side, but my work life has oh, been okay. dramatic. And as you know, dogs take some work. <laughs> right. No, I hear you. Definitely. Uh, but definitely check out the book, A Tale of Love, Larry Grogan, Bonds and Nobles, Amazon. You can also go to your local community bookstores, which we hope that you do because, um, you know, we support local businesses, small businesses, of course. Uh, but definitely check out the book. It's really worth a read. And uh, Larry, I really appreciate your time today. As we go towards the, the end of the interview with the last question, can you tell people where they can find more of you, website, social media, all that jazz? Yeah, our website is a tale of love, T-A-I-L, taleoflove.com. Facebook is the same, Instagram. Um, you, it's all on the website. And actually, if you go to our website, you can... Um, find a sample of the book and it's free um, and you can get an idea of the, the life lessons that Scrappy taught me so please go down and uh, take a look and download it yeah definitely check out the book I actually have a dog that's banging on the door trying to get in because <laughs> he wants he wants to lay on the bed over here so, but regardless of that uh, but, again, Larry Grogan here on Fire Breathing Rob, A Tale of Love. Definitely check it out at your local bookstores or Amazon or Bonds and Nobles. Larry, 
Uh, thanks so much. I appreciate your time. Let's definitely do this again down the road. It's just stories that we need to keep talking about, like your story, like Scrappy stories, because they are inspirational for the viewers. And they, you know, really teach the story how dogs can really change our lives. So thank you so much. My pleasure, Rob. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure.